Hello, and welcome to this week's uh, My Family Devotional, uh, going through this book by the Jenkins Institute, talking about how we can be better families and stronger families. Uh, this week is talking about prayer, uh, and specifically teaching our children how to pray. Uh, and I want you to think for a second um, about your own parents. Like, What was something that you saw in your parents that you really wanted to emulate or that um, that really inspired or that I don't know something that that you saw in them that was like wow I want I love that like I want that to be a part of my life uh, hopefully there's something right something that they did or made a habit of that you're like man I I want that to be a part of my life uh, and there's also a flip side of that um, and having become a parent uh, recently it makes you think a, a second of like okay like there's some things in my life like we were talking about this the other day like I'm I'm usually a pretty even tempered kind of guy like I just don't get too uh, fired up I guess until I get behind the wheel of a car and then um, I can yell all day and honk at people uh, because for some reason behind a wheel people just aggravate me and that just gets that gets me flared up a little bit and so but I've had to think about like when Mila is in a car I I don't want to if somebody cuts me off I don't want to go I don't like hey you know me why'd you do that um sorry uh so it makes us think about like some of the things in our own lives like do we really want our kids to see that in us uh, and so Monday starts off with a really cool question just at the front of the title uh, do they see you maybe we can even change that what do they see in you like, what do our kids see in us and specifically prayer what do they see do they see a prayer life in us uh, if so what is that what part of our prayer life do they see I think one of the most fascinating questions the apostles ask Jesus, and he records it here um, in Luke chapter 11, is Jesus gets done praying, and apparently his disciples can hear him praying, and the first thing they ask him is, like, Jesus, teach us how to pray like that. Like, man, I, I wish we could pray like that. And it makes, it makes me, one part, wonder, like, man, what, was, what were Jesus' prayers like uh, if they were that good? Um, but then also, I'm like, well, wait, we we do have a, an example of Jesus' prayer. It's in the John, uh, toward the end of John, in chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17. There's all kinds of prayers and stuff in there. But there's also a really important prayer in the garden where Jesus says, you just get this very vulnerable moment of him saying, man, I wish this could be passed up, but not my will, but your will be done. Uh, and so I don't think there was anything just super uh, crazy um, special about the way that, that Jesus prayed, but the, his heart and intention behind it, um, I think, was something that, that they wanted to emulate, that they wanted to put in their own lives. So what do our kids see in us? And Tuesday talks about simplicity in prayer. Uh, I remember I grew up going to, in middle and high school, going to a Christian school. Uh, and there was one teacher, his name was Mr. Joe Oswald, uh, who was awesome. Uh, and we always loved when he prayed because he would come up, and he'd always say a really short prayer. Like it was open up, pray for something really specific for a second or two, and then close the prayer. And we're like, oh, yeah. Um, and we probably loved it for the wrong reasons uh, because it was really short and we didn't want to be in chapel that day, uh, maybe. Uh, so that wasn't great. But uh, there was also like, there was just the simplicity, but also meaning behind his prayers. Like they weren't just, he wasn't just getting up there and saying a quick prayer to get off the stage. He's getting up there praying for something very specific and meaningful and then and then closing it. It's very simple, but it's also very powerful. Um, 
And I like what he writes in the Devo book about prayer, about our ability to talk to God and have a relationship with God. It says, may our int intimacy never turn into frivolous attitude toward God, yet may our reverence never cause us to feel distant, distant from him. Really cool one. May our int intimacy never turn into a frivolous attitude, and may our reverence never cease us to feel distant from Him. And then Wednesday, he talks about bringing him, bringing our children up. Um, he has some good stuff in there, but uh, it can be summed up in something that a good friend and mentor of mine, his name's Brad Montague, uh, just came out with a book, Fantastic Bureau of Imagination. Uh, so you should check it out. It's a kid's book. Um, he's a great writer. I just ordered mine. Hasn't come in yet, but you should order it. Uh, he has some good stuff. But he always says, um, when we were at Mid South uh, as counselors there, he he would over and over again say, uh, he was he's still the director there. He would say, um, here's what your job is: be who you needed when you were younger. Um, think about what you needed at that age as a teenager. Uh, and be that for some of the kids who are there. What did we, what did we need when we were younger, and how can we be that to to our kids and our family uh, today? So hopefully those are some good thoughts for you to take with you. Um, also coming up this Sunday, I uh, didn't talk too much about about prayer. There's a lot that could be said, but um, if you want some more, uh, Sunday morning in our building faithful families class. Uh, Mr. Ralph Romero is going to be speaking on this very topic about how we can make our house a house of prayer. Uh, so I hope you can join us for that. It'll be in the morning at 9.30 in a small fellowship room. Um, I hope you can join it because that's going to be awesome. Uh, if there's anything we need, reach out. Anything you need, reach out to us and hopefully we can help you with it. I hope you have a great rest of the week.